Stories for Reading Comprehension by L. A. Hill, Cassette Two, published and copyright Longman Group Limited, 1985. Unit One. There is not enough petrol in the world for everybody now, and each year there is less. So what are we going to do when it finishes? Perhaps we will go back to horses and carriages and bicycles. In the Second World War, some people did not use petrol in their cars. They made gas from wood and plants instead, and then they put it in big bags on top of their cars. The cars did not go fast, but it was better than nothing. But we cannot cut down all our trees to make gas. We need them for other things too. Besides gas, we can also use electricity for our cars. But first, we must make the electricity. Some countries have coal, and they make electricity with that. But we will not always have coal. Other countries have big, strong rivers, and these turn turbines and make electricity more easily and cheaply. We are also able to get power from the tides. We put turbines in the mouth of a river. Then, when the tide comes up, it turns the turbines, and when it runs back. Towards the sea, it turns them again, and we know that the waves of the sea can also turn turbines when they go up and down. Which of all these things will make our electricity in the year two thousand? Unit two. Sally was nineteen years old. She had always lived with her parents, but now the time had come for her to go to university, in another part of the country, to study to be a doctor. Her mother was very sad about this, and she was also afraid, because she loved her daughter very much, and she thought, "My little girl will be alone for the first time in her life." She won't know anybody. There will be nobody to look after her, and perhaps she will have trouble, or she will be very sad because she isn't with us. Sally said goodbye to her father and to her cat, and promised to telephone every week. Then her mother took her to the university by train. When they said goodbye, her mother cried. And on the way back home, she cried again. Then every week, Sally kept her promise and telephoned. They talked for several minutes, and Sally was always very happy, and never said that she missed her parents. Her mother was not glad about this. She thought, perhaps she's finding the university. Nicer than her home, but then some holidays were getting near. That week, when Sally telephoned her parents, she said, "The students who live here were talking yesterday evening, and they said we are very happy that we're going to return home again soon for a few days." Sally's mother was very glad that the students had said this. She must really miss us," she thought. Then she said, "And did you say that too?" "Oh yes," Sally answered. "We all said that it's easy to speak to our parents on the telephone every week when we're away, but we really miss our pets."